My name is Madam Toro. I work for GDC. I'm the manager in charge of direct department. And uh, I have worked in the geothermal sector for 20 years now. I am a trained mechanical engineer, but uh, my specialization has been on direct use of geothermal energy, which is, a, which is a passion to me. And I'm happy that uh, today I'll be talking to you about uh, what I love and what I like to do, use of geothermal energy. Geothermal energy is the energy that we get when we drill in a geothermally active place. Uh, there are two main uses of geothermal energy. You can use it for electricity generation and you can also use it for direct use. Today, I will focus mainly on the direct use, but uh, I cannot be able to really talk about direct use without explaining in brief how, what is the difference between the direct use and the indirect uses. When you drill in a geothermal field, you can get either steam or water or a mixture of the two. And this is dictated by nature. It is not you to choose. The, what the value they give you is what you take. When you drill and you get steam, uh, that steam is mostly useful when it is used for electric generation. Uh, some wells will just give you hot water or can also give you a steam but at a, at a a pressure that cannot be used in a power plant. And because we spend uh, quite an amount of money, about uh, four to six million uh, Kenya shillings, you cannot just re and the well gives you a fluid. It is economical to be able to identify what uses you can use the, the fluid for. For example, Menengai being a high temperature system, we have drilled wells and we have got gotten as pure steam and those are very very rare. You can also drill, drill and get, we have also drilled and gotten uh, steam and water and we have also drilled and gotten uh, wells that just give us hot water. It is up to the developer and the expertise that is internally available to identify what uses you can be able to put those wells into. When you get a toothpaste or a water and steam, you separate the steam and the steam will go and generate for you electricity and then the hot water. Normally what has been done, especially in Africa, is just to take the hot water because of environmental reasons, drill another uh, equally expensive well and put it back to the ground or put it back to the reservoir. There are two advantages of, of doing that. One of them is for environmental reasons, and the second one is to uh, pressurize the reservoir. But remember, when you separate this water and steam, you still get uh, left with the water at elevated temperatures. Depending on the pressure, you can get as high as 170 degrees. That water contains a lot of energy that can be used for process heating. And that is what we call the direct uses. Before you return that water to the ground, remember you have the advantage of nature. Nature has heated for you the water. Normally, for you to get 170 degrees, you have to put fresh water in a boiler and use fossil fuel. But here, nature, being so generous, has given you elevated temperatures. Uh, it is up to the developer or up to the technical expertise to advise what can you be able to do with these 170 degrees. And that is what I do for GDC, to identify the energy that is available, either in this separated brine, or in the wells that we drill and we get purely hot water. Um, that one essential is what we call direct uses. I have had people asking, why, does it, what, why is it called direct? And the direct uses are supposed to be electricity. That is not true. When you use steam to generate power, remember you are converting heat to electricity. And every time you are converting energy from one form to another, there is a lot of losses in between. Uh, that is the indirect use. The direct use is when you, heat, you use the heat as it is. And there are many, many uses that you can use. Um, from uh, a research that was done uh, by somebody called Rido in 1973, 
he specified the many uses you can you can put this uh, energy into and they range from slightly above the ambient from 30 degrees you can be able to utilize this energy all the way to 200 degrees um, some of them are like when you are on the lower side of uh, energy you can use it for even snow melting for those people in uh, countries that are cold you can use to heat uh, the fish ponds because that one requires about 30 degrees you can use it in your swimming pool that requires uh, around 40 degrees we can heat the greenhouses I'm um, going up as I for with the temperature set you can use it for greenhouse heating you can use it for milk pasteurization you can use it for dry and even you can use it for uh, like uh, pulp and uh, paper and pulp industry you can use it for uh, for even making skimmed milk uh, and powder milk it depends on what temperatures you have and also the steam that was used for power generation assume you have enough power and you do not need to use to generate power anymore that steam remember it's the same same, same steam that is used in a boiler that is generated in a boiler so you can still use it for many many other processes in GDC uh, we would say we are the pioneers in the, uh, this area because we have set up five uh, demo projects from 2000, uh, 2015 until recently. The recent one was last year, 2019. So in Menengai, we looked around what can benefit us as GDC and what can benefit the local community and what also can bring in the, the stakeholders neighbors that we have around Minica. So we came up with the uh, four projects that have been running from 2015. One of them was greenhouse heating. Uh, the produce that we get from the greenhouse heating, we use it internally in our drilling campsite. We also have a fish pod, two small fish pods where we stock uh, fish. And what we do, we heat the water to ensure that the fish are kept at constant temperatures. Somebody would ask, why would you hit a uh, greenhouse in this side of the group? We do it to control humidity because very early in the morning and late at night, the humidity gets very high. And when the humidity gets above 85 degrees, uh, 85 percent, what happens? We start forming the fungus and the crops are really affected. So what we need to do is to ensure that the, the greenhouses are warm at night and very early in the morning, and even when it is cold and, 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 and moist in the air. So the moment we, uh, we realize that the humidity is getting to above 25, above 85, we start heating the greenhouse. And that one has resulted to uh, very high, relatively high yield. Uh, we don't use fungicides, and crops grow faster. We can be able to save that percent of your growing time by creating that environment. That's the same with, with fish. Then we have a small milk pasteurizer, which can pasteurize 150 liters of milk. The same same thing we do. We pasteurize our milk and we use it, use it at our camp. Remember, these are all marketing and uh, training tools to market the technology. What are we, we aiming at? Our aim is to, to uh, educate the investors so that they can be able to, to invest and we sell the energy to them. We also have a, a laundry machine and a, a, a cloth dryer. That one is purely for our staff in the camp. We have a semi-commercial dryer which can hold uh, to six tons and the, the experiments we have done shows that you can be able to dry the six tons within a, a period of four to five hours. That's a very, very big safety. And the dryer came at the right time because that time it was very wet, very, very rainy. So we got all sorts of query, uh, requests for farmers to come and dry. Uh, this one is big, so it is semi commercial. And we are marketing the technology. So uh, we have proved that uh, the demo project or the direct use project can be able to benefit from geothermal energy. We are key in two, but uh, whichever direction you can look at it, we can also find ourselves in three. 
The first one is food security. As I said, we have been demonstrating a greenhouse city, and what we grow in the greenhouses are food. And uh, we have been also demonstrating in uh, heated aquaculture pots or fish pots where we have been growing tilapia fish. And now we have also been demonstrating uh, the milk processing and uh, this century the green dry. I grew up in an area where we were doing a lot of milk. But there would be a time, especially when it's raining, that the milk would just go to waste because this milk is fresh and it will go. Uh, it, it will, it, you do, we, there was no way of preserving the milk. If you can be able to make milk powder using geothermal energy, dietary, if you can be able to pasteurize, if you can be able to make long life, you are ensuring that people will have the milk throughout the year. The prices are stable and the people will have what they need, whether it is during the dry season or during the wet season. Uh, drying of maize is one of the areas that our research has shown that more than 40% of the harvest get lost. Because you are harvesting and mostly people dry maize using the sun. There is no sun, it's wet, it is harvesting time. You realize that you cannot be able to dry. But with a geothermal dryer, you just need to deliver your maize. Within four hours, you have your maize at the right moisture content and you can store it for years and years. And also with the county government now, the county government have become our key partners. Why? The county government has people to take care of, has jobs to create, has a market for, for Wanjiku or for the common Monanji. Now, if Yodamo Energy can give this to the county government. Everybody would run to us. So there is a, a direct connection between direct use and community and ordinary Kenyan empowerment. So it is good that we understand what it is. It's good that we invest in it. And we invite people to come and see what we are doing. The next thing will be a very big industry powered by Yodamo Energy just next to the Menekai Prospect. And our plan is wherever we go as GTC to generate electricity, to dream that the plants will go hand in hand. This is an um, electric, electricity project and this is a direct use project. They have to have an industry park. And it's good for people to understand that or Karia or Kenjian or Naivasha can have an industrial park, Menekai can have an industrial park, Baringo Sirari will have an industrial park, Suswa will have an industrial park or a heat park. Because every geothermal project will generate residue heat that can be used in those industries. Thank you very much.